Why hello there YouTube, welcome to another League of Legends guide. Today we are covering Jungle Vi. Punch first. Ask questions while punching. With her recent buffs, Vi has become one of the best junglers in the current meta. She's strong at all stages of the game and has great ganks, even including pre-6. In her build we generally go for a warrior and then a trinity force and then get really tanky. Even though this of course will make us a really tanky frontliner, we'll still deal a ton of damage. We have a built-in escape from her Q and very high snowball potential due to our mobility and high damage. With those gap closers come our high lockdown and mobility. Finally, we then have percentage of health and an armor shredder in our W, which makes us a great tank killer and dueler. Although we are an insanely strong jungler, we still have a couple cons. If we fall behind in the game, we're not going to be that impactful because we will be jumping into teamfights and we'll usually end up dying before we actually make too much of an impact. Then there's our Q ability which is a skill shot and it does have a charge time and whatnot so it can be a little bit of a struggle for new players to learn. For our mastery page we have two different viable options. The first one here is the 12 ferocity, 18 resolve, strength of the ages build. This is a great rune page for Vi as you will be a little bit more durable when you jump into those fights with your ult. This is definitely my favorite rune page on her but there's a great alternative for those damage junkies. So here's that page and it is 12 ferocity and 18 cunning and by no surprise we take Thunderlord's Decree as our offensive keystone. This is great for those Vi's that are wishing to play a more carry oriented role within the game. You won't be quite as durable but of course the trade off is you will have a lot more burst damage. I'd personally choose my mastery page based on what we have on our team already. If you have a tanky top and support then you can easily get away with taking Thunderlord's. If however you had something like a Zyra's support and a carry top laner, then I would opt for Strength of the Ages personally. For a rune page we take the very generic AD jungler page which is attack damage reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues, and attack speed quints. As we will always be going for either a trinity force or a black cleaver in our build, we will have a lot of ways of getting CDR to finish off that cap, so we don't need the CDR blues. Take the magic resist instead and get through the jungle really quick with all that attack damage and attack speed. Our first required summoner skill is of course smite. It's good for counter jungling, buff control and for taking dragon and baron. Do not jungle without smite, you won't be able to buy your jungler item and you're going to be a useless piece of shit. Our second required summoner is flash. Your gap closing Q may not always be available and this can be great for landing kills in those situations. Of course it's also great for escaping those bad situations as well. One of my favorite little combos is to use flash while in your Q to close a greater distance on your enemy so you actually land that Q. To do this combo you of course need to take flash. Take flash. So let's kick off our abilities by starting with our passive blast shield. So right off the top I'm going to say this passive is really really strong. You gain a shield equal to 10% of your maximum health for 3 seconds which has a cooldown of between 18 and 8 seconds based on your level. If something like a Karthus Requiem is coming in to damage you, you can hit a minion with something like say your E and you will get this passive shield so you will get a lot of reduced damage from that ultimate. You can do this to save your life in many different situations. Also make sure you do watch the timer on the passive, generally if you are going in for an ultimate on a team you'll want to have that passive shield activate so you do reduce a bunch of the damage you take. So now next up is your Q, Vault Breaker. This is the ability I max first for its extra mobility. With its up to 725 range this ability can jump almost every single wall in Summoner's Rift. This makes this ability great for escaping, chasing and ganking. When it's fully charged it then even does double its damage. It's also worth noting that this applies denting blows to everybody it hits. So when you are actually charging this ability you also cannot auto attack or use any other abilities. You can still however use your summoner spells which is why we can combo with our flash and items. You can also use this to knock back enemies a short distance. When you use your ultimate on a target you will go to that target, land behind them and then you can cue them towards your own team. Next is your W ability, Denting Blows. This is just a passive ability that makes every third attack on the same target do bonus damage, lower its armor by 20% and grants Vi bonus attack speed. This ability is great against tanks since it does reduce that armor and does percentage of targets maximum health damage. In addition it then also procs with Q and E. 
If you wanted to go for early solo dragons, you'll want to put a bunch of points into this instead of your E ability. I, however, is somebody who prefers ganking during that duration and whatnot, so I max E second instead of W. So your last basic ability is your E, Excessive Force. This is on a charge system, and you can have a maximum of two. When you activate the ability, you do bonus physical damage to that target, and even the ones behind. The AoE range that it has is actually pretty awesome. You can hit a minion and still kill somebody fleeing away from you. While this is activated, you also have a bonus 50 attack range, so make sure you use this to your advantage. This skill is then great for activating your passive shield. When you're on a target, E to do extra damage, and as long as your passive is off cooldown, you will get a nice shield. So last, but certainly not least, is your ultimate, Assault and Battery. This ability is just fantastic for getting on top of targets, and with its 140% bonus AD ratio, it hits like a truck. The gap closer in CC is really strong. You charge towards the single enemy and knock them down, dealing tons of damage. Now unfortunately, this ability can be countered by a lot of the abilities in the game. Stuff like Morgana's Shield, Sivir's Shield, Fiora's Riposte, Fizz's E, Hourglass, Banshee's Veil, Elise's E, Yi's Q, all sorts of crap. On those targets that don't have anything to deal with it, however, it is extremely devastating. Keep in mind, generally you're going to be using this on an AD carry anyways, and the only thing that has something to deal with it is Sivir, unless of course they have a Banshee's Veil. For our ability order, we make sure we max our Q first, followed by our E, and then our W. Although, of course, we take a point in our ultimate at 6, 11, and 16. Having W at level 1 is the quickest way to get through the jungle, so make sure you grab that at level 1. Then move into your E for that AoE, and then it's on to your Q max. As I mentioned before, if you do plan on soloing Dragon really early on in the game, make sure you do grab a couple points in your W, so that's actually possible. When I'm jungling on Vi, I always go to the camp near my bottom lane so I can get a strong leash. I'll do that camp, then do either red or blue, depending of course what side of the map I'm on, and then go to the other buff and kill that as well. Once I finally have both buffs, I like to get a quick gank off on the enemy top laner. If you've received a solid leash on your first jungle camp, you should pretty much be full health at this point. Try to land your Q on the top laner without using your flash. If he flashes away, then use your flash to follow. Of course, if he does flash under his tower, don't be an idiot, don't try to tower dive at level 3, you're probably gonna die. After the gank, you can either take scuttle then buy, or gank mid, or you could just back right after the gank. Vi has a couple hard matchups, and the first one is Graves. He's a very good duelist, and is surprisingly tanky. Make sure you avoid walls when he has his Q ready, because his Q will chunk you if it hits the wall. Then, there is Nidalee. God damn all that mobility. In this matchup, it can actually be hard to land one of those Qs, and even if you do, she can just keep jumping away afterwards. Nocturne can also give you a really hard time, and it's all due to the spell shield. If the Nocturne's good, he's going to be able to block your ultimate. In this matchup, you're going to want to try to snowball before he even becomes relevant. His ganks are very mediocre until he's level 6. Then, finally, there's Jax, and he can absolutely destroy you if he lands a good counter-strike. Avoid this ability at all costs. Once it's down, you're clear to engage. Alright, so now for our item build, which starts with a machete, refillable potion, and warding totem. For our first buys, we got the Hunter's Potion, Sweeping Lens, Stalker's Blade, Skirmisher's Blade, Normal Boots, and a Vision Ward. All of these things are fantastic buys for your first back, but obviously you have to choose between the Stalkers or the Skirmishers. I prefer the Stalkers. For our core build, we enchant that Stalkers with Warrior, grab Boots of Swiftness, and then choose between a Trinity Force or a Black Cleaver. For dishing out tons of damage to squishy targets, you'll want the Trinity Force, and if you're against a very tanky lineup, then you'll want the Black Cleaver. In our item pool, we start with the damage side of things, with the Yumu's Ghost Blade for its awesome activate, Blade of the Ruin King for its awesome tank shreddingness, Titanic Hydra for its awesome AoE, a Sterax Gauge for its shield and yet more attack damage, and then even Maw adds some damage as well with all of its attack damage, but it's also great for defensive as it gives magic resist and a shield as well. So of these quote unquote damage items, the only ones I actually like are the Sterax and the Maw. I prefer my Vi to be a very, very tanky bruiser. Those other three items though honestly are great ways of adding some damage if you do need it in your team. But for the tanky side of things, we'll start with the armor with the Sunfire Cape, Deadman's Plate, Randuin's, and Thornmail. 
All are fantastic. The Sunfire just adds a bit of damage. Dead Man's Plate is great for the movement speed. Randowins is great against high crit champions like say a Yasuo. And Thornmail, obviously great against very high AD teams. As for some magic resist, we got the Spirit Visage and the Banshee's Veil. The Spirit Visage is definitely my favorite item, but the Banshee's Veil is good if there are multiple CCs and you want to block at least one of them every 40 seconds. Our last item is a mix between both, the Guardian Angel. This is just a great late game item if you do wish to come back to life. For the Trinity Forest build, I take the core, then add Dead Man's Plate, Sterex Gauge, and Spirit Visage. This makes us extremely tanky, yet adds some very solid damage. For the Black Cleaver, I take that core, add a Maw, Dead Man's Plate, and a Guardian Angel. This one would be great, especially against a high AP team since we do have the Maw and the Guardian Angel in there. Remember, a lot of squishy targets take Trinity Force, and a lot of tanky targets take the Black Cleaver. Well, that is all I've got for Vi. Easily one of the best junglers at the moment, and if you have her and you're going to play her, enjoy your free load. Thanks a ton for watching this guide. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. I don't know what you want. Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall. My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're